This is Paul Herkoff and Jay Masco presenting our surgical technique for fluoroscopically guided suture anchor placement in acetabular labrum repair. We have no relevant disclosures. Case presentation is an 18-year-old female twirler who's had pain in her hip for three months. She did not improve with physical therapy. She had partial pain relief from an intraarticular injection. On physical exam, she had a positive impingement test, scour test, and a positive apprehension test. MRI arthrogram was obtained of the hip, demonstrating partial tearing of the ligamentum teres and thinning of her capsule consistent with hip instability. The labrum was read as normal. However, diagnostic arthroscopy revealed bruising of the anterior labrum, tearing, and a chondral wave sign affecting the acetabular labrum from approximately the 12 o'clock to the 2 o'clock position. The ligamentum teres tear was debrided using a combination of shaver and electrocautery. Flexible electrocautery can be very helpful to reach hard to access parts of the joint, including the cotyloid fossa and the fovea capitis. Labor repair was now performed. The first anchor is placed at the 12 o'clock position using a vertical C arm fluoroscopy picture. The drill guide is oriented parallel or slightly divergent from the subchondral bone. The drill is then inserted under fluoroscopic guidance while visualizing arthroscopically. The anchor is then placed without moving the drill guide. Again, we will check the articular cartilage to ensure that there's been no bubbling or damage to the subchondral bone. The drill guide is then removed and the sutures are passed through the labrum and tied down. The second anchor is then placed at the one o'clock position while reclining the C-arm approximately 30 degrees. Again, the drill guide is placed divergent or parallel to the subchondral bone. The drill is inserted under fluoroscopic as well as arthroscopic guidance. Here the anchor can be seen being inserted at the one o'clock position. Once again, we will inspect the articular cartilage of the acetabulum after the anchor has been placed to ensure there's no bubbling of the cartilage. The drill guide is then removed and the sutures are passed through the labrum. To facilitate this, a curved suture passer can be very helpful to improve the angle of approach to the labrum. This suture is passed through the delaminated cartilage in a labral base fixation technique or a mattress suture technique. In cases where the sutures are crossed, simply grasping the suture limb exiting from the labrum can uncross the sutures and then the sutures are easily tied down. Our third anchor is placed at the two o'clock position anteriorly. Again, the C-arm is reclined another 30 degrees. This gives us a Good visualization of the subchondral bone. The perineal post can be seen overlying the image. The drill is then placed under fluoroscopic guidance. Here's the video showing the drill being inserted into the acetabulum. Again, this is visualized arthroscopically. The anchor is then placed, inspecting the articular cartilage. The sutures are then passed in a similar fashion. Once all of our sutures have been passed, the traction is let down on the hip and it is reduced. The hip is then brought through a full range of motion, particularly up into flexion and internal rotation to ensure that the suction seal is restored and that there is no cam deformity causing undue tension on the labral repair. Finally, since this is a case of hip instability, three capsular plication sutures are placed and tied down. The surgical pearl of this technique is that tangential C-arm fluoroscopy views will allow for visualization of the subchondral bone to guide suture anchor placement. Thank you very much for your attention.